Hi, everybody. This is GM John Fedorovich for ICC's continuing coverage of the Tata Steel Vikings A traditional tournament in uh, Vikings A Holland. And uh, today was the last round. And going into the last round, which turned out to be a pretty exciting last round, we had some contenders. We had Wesley So with it going into the final round with a half point lead over Magnus Carlson, Levon Aronian, and Wei Yi from China. And, um, and, and so, so it shaped up to be uh, an exciting round. Now, when I saw the pairings, I saw Nelpo Banamachi against Wesley So, and with Wesley So having black, I thought maybe that could be interesting. Maybe Nepo Banamachi can play a good game, maybe beat Wesley So, maybe make a draw. Wei Yi against Wachasek, Wachasek, very strong player from Poland, not having a good tournament, but uh, but still last round people would like to have a go home with a good memory at least. Try, I always tried to win the last round when I was playing U.S. championships and took it very seriously. Just because you were having a bad tournament doesn't mean you have to play a bad game in the last round. And and Drake and Aronian, Aronian was trailing also. Uh, going into the last round with 7.5, with a chance to, to tie Wesley So or finish ahead of him even. and uh, But but having the black pieces uh, in, in, in the last round is, is never an easy job. Um, another game that, that had a lot to do with the standings was Carlson against Koryakin. And Koryakin sacked the piece, uh, Carlson sacked the piece very early on. And I don't know, uh, on first sight, I really don't think that it's a sound piece sack, but Carlson ties Koryakin up and maybe White, according to computers, which I checked it out because I was kind of curious, computers thought that Carlson was slightly better, but uh, near the end, Koryakin became uh, slightly to medium better and had some chances. And then I think when Koryakin saw Wesley so win the game and saw that the other results were falling properly for him to come in second, he just uh, kind of circled the wagons and became solid and, and just made a draw. And so uh, second place behind Wesley. So for Carlson, uh, Carlson's always disappointed. He thinks he's supposed to win every tournament. And, of course, that's not the easiest thing to do. I feel that really what happened here is that the crucial uh, point in this tournament, the turning point in this year's Tata Steel happened in round eight where Carlson just had a miserable game against the uh, young Hungarian Richard Rappert. And Richard uh, played a great game and uh, a big upset. But my, my students at the school where I teach, I was showing them this game. And they're like, wow, Carlson lost. And I said, okay, but a 2,700 player is a pretty strong player. And, uh, and, and Rappert is a strong player and a very dangerous player. So round eight um, was uh, Rappert defeats Carlson. And Carlson never was chasing Wesley So after that. The entire tournament uh, came within a half a point and uh, no closer. And uh, and the way it ended up, Wesley So uh, winning today against Nico um finished with nine points. And uh, so I'm going to show this game first, Andrake and Aronian. Uh, Andrake is, uh, is a very solid player and does well with these D4 openings. And we get into the E3. Now, maybe Andraken plays E3 because he wanted to, maybe he wanted to avoid uh, some sort of uh, semi Slav, or maybe he wanted to avoid uh, some kind, you know, perhaps something like this. And usually E3, I, I like the systems where white goes knight C3 and tries to get the bishop to G5. So he played E3, Bishop here. I don't think too much of this system for Black, to tell you the truth. I don't like the, 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 the systems. I don't like I don't like this one for Black. I don't like A6 for Black, and I don't like G6 for Black. I like E6 lines with the Bishop D6 taking on C4 at the proper moment. Um, I've studied games. I've never played this stuff for Black, but I'd study games of Boris Gelfand, and also, Alexei Dreyev has played this, and I think Vichy Anand has played it, the Moran variation type of stuff. I, I think that that those positions 
give black better chances. I feel like these these bishop g4s, g6, and the a6, that white can get a slight edge with uh, just normal kind of play. And that's what happens here. Typical to go after the bishop pair. And so he has the bishop pair. The light squared bishop could be very useful here later on. A3 is a good move. It stops it stops the bishop b4, and also sometimes later on, white can expand on the queen side and try to break down black's queen side structure. g5 is kind of a typical move here, stopping white from playing g5 and also freezing these pawns, trying to play for some squares. Usually what black does is black hopes for e4 and then can maybe use the f4 square to bother white with. g6, maybe bishop d6 was better. And now I, I, I'm not so sure that breaking up this chain, this is very controversial to me. I think that when Black is faced with the bishop pair, he should try and keep the position locked a little while longer. And and now, while well, Aronian at this time is, is thinking about juicing up the position, trying to win, it's possible that that counts for his over-aggressive play in this game. C5... And, and and now you can see that the board is opening up a little bit for the bishop pair. Black wants to be really careful about taking on d4 because it could be an awkward defense here uh, of the g5 pawn. Don't want to go bishop h6, doesn't look right. And the knight moving to defend g5 is very uncomfortable also. So rook a7, rook d1. I, I, I think that white's play. And now this was a very this was a very good move from from uh, Andrake. And what he wants to do is he wants to clarify the structure and open up the A file. And now if if the pawn sacrifice happens here with bishop takes B4, E4 is a nice move and G5 is going to fall. And then the, even though there's two pass pawns, black's in no shape to use it. And I think that black's kin can get into some kind of danger here. E5 would be a nice move too. Where would this knight go? And you can see that this kind of position is pretty good. So Aronian tries to be positional here and stop stuff with knight to b6. e4, as we said, same kind of thing, hitting the g5 pawn. Knight to d7, defending the g5 pawn. But now e5. And knight e4 is a very good threat. Once again, bothering this. You can see that black's king's in the center. And there's weird coordination with black's pieces. Knight c4, bishop c1, keeping the bishop. And if bishop takes b4, knight e4, or even bishop takes g5, both look good. Um, it might have been better for black to mosey on the king here and leave the rook here for defense. Because as we see him in, in a little bit, the rook on f8 got into some problems. h4 is a nice move here. He would like to get a bishop h6. At this moment, he's threatening to take a pawn and drop in knight f6. And... There could be a mate on G7 happening shortly, and any peace sack that White would try would not would not work out. Would, uh, would, that Black would try would not work out too well on the F6 square. Now, this is where Rodian maybe uh, uh, falters on the defense. G5 does not look bad. G5 was the best try, and on Bishop takes just to recapture um, with with just about anything except for the knight. And, uh, and and this pawn here is maintained. This is here. I, I mean, we're always afraid to give up the exchange, of course, with rooks on the board and whatnot. But Black's position looks solid, and he's going to wipe out this queenside pawn, so this would have been an opportunity. It turns out that rook to e8 was just not a good move at all. Uh, queen h3, with, with some idea of, of perhaps g5 and queen takes h4, again, going for that mate. With knight f6 check, getting a pawn to f6 and creating some threats of, with mates on g7 and also h8. So this was just a really hideous move to, to have to play. Um, and the rook is on the e file. And like I said, black's coordination is not good. Takes on f5. And now this move is inaccurate, giving, giving a chance here with knight here. And now... Aronian maybe could have gotten knight takes knight, pawn takes knight, and rook to d7. And this position, 
does not look bad at all for black. Probably it's black is, is, is uh, maybe around equal here. Uh, knight on e5, defending g6, that kind of stuff here. So, but but after knight c5, Aronian played bishop g5, which is which is not good. And after bishop to d5, it becomes a problem. He could trade, and he's got he's got pressure here. And of course, knight takes c5, takes three connected pass pawns to two connected pass pawns. And whites are, are further up, and they're moving faster. Knight to b6, bishop here. Snatch, it first goes knight to e6. Uh, it may be in some cases he could protect with f4 and then go d5. Aronian finds a way to get two pieces for a rook here, except that these guys look very dangerous, and this one is really not bothering white too much. Rook here. Now, Maybe a computer could defend this position, but a human face with the three connected pass pawns, very, very, very scary. It turns out that king to h5 was was the losing move here. After rook to c5, uh, the best attempt was to go here to have the knights protect each other. Um, if something like rook c6, maybe this knight could come in, and black wants to get counter play against the deep one. I believe white is still better here, and this is going to be an aggravating position for black to defend, but at least he has some activity going there and some chances. Uh, King h5 um, is a little too optimistic, hoping somehow to make queens with these pawns. And now three connected pass pawns getting controlled. King h1 just getting out of the way of the knights. And now Black would have to have a lot of things fall into place here, not, not to lose this game or even to win. He's yeah, somehow he's got to get a pawn to g2, get his king to g3, and try to mate with knight e2 or knight h3. And I don't see that happening. This rook is going to really harass him. B5, get it going. Nothing like outside pass pawns against knights. Always, always a torture for the knight. He had to go. Knight takes b5 or resigns because this pawn was going in. So rook takes b5, now whites up the exchange, and white just pushes. And here, here, Aronian picked this time to resign. There's really nothing to do here. Um, king to here, pawn to here, king to here, pawn to here, threatening this kind of stuff, threatening this kind of stuff. And it's going to be a queen, or he's just going to take everybody off. So, and Draken did his part. As, as one of the people playing somebody with a chance for first. And Draken did his job, and Wojtasek did his job against Wei Yi. Wei Yi and, and Carlson and Aronian were all tied with seven and a half points going into the last round, half a point behind Wesley So. Our, our next game will be the decisive move game of the tournament, Nebaman and Pachi against So, and that this was the second turning point of the tournament. Wesley So wrapping up the tournament by winning in pretty good style against Nepo Panamachi, which I think I'm saying his name more or less correctly. Not an easy name for me to say. And uh, and now let's just see that game also. Hi everybody, GM John Fedorovich again, back for our second game of the Tata Steel recap. And uh, this this and like I spoke earlier, Richard Rapport's round eight victory over Carlson were the turning points in the tournament. Congratulations to Wesley So on a terrific result. Nine points plus five in this type of tournament. Wesley So has definitely put him in, in, in the conversation as a, f a future world champion, whether he plays Magnus Carlson or whether he plays Nakamura or Fabiano, you'd have to say that Wesley So, look at his rating, 2808, and must have picked up more points here. Uh, well, not must have, obviously, plus five, he probably picked up a decent amount of points, even with a 2808 rating. So let's see how Wesley So defeated Ian Nemepachimachi in the U.S. round. D4, knight of six, bishop G5. I, I don't know. I mean, a professional player playing 
playing the Trompovsky in an important game. I don't know why he just didn't play his usual stuff, C4, and get to re- and reach some positions. Uh, a, a solid reply here from Wesley. So if, if it could have some chances here just to get into regular positions on with E6, normal kind of orthodox Queen's Gambit positions, maybe a Tordakova or something like that. Of course, in this game... If you're Wesley So and you have a point lead and you're playing black against a strong player, I think you're very happy to make a solid position and probably pretty happy if a draw occurred, especially since the other contenders were playing against very, uh, well, everybody in the tournament is strong, but we just saw Aronian playing black against Andraken. Not an easy win for Aronian. Um... We spoke about Wojtasek winning a nice Rui Lopez against Wei Yi. Wojtasek with, with the black pieces. That might have been another situation where Wei Yi was playing for a win and went a little bit too far. So here, knight to d2, c5, pawn takes c5. Um, I, I, I mean, already I think that white should consider taking on f6 and doubling the pawns. Like uh, my old friend Julian Hodgson used to do all the time. I mean, that was really the point of the Trompowski is to put the bishop out on g5 and take something. And pawn takes c5, e6, just coming to recapture it. If b5 will get this usual routine going here, not a6, a5, and then on c3, something like b6, and the whole chain gets collapsed, this is... This is the, why the, why this move B, B4 isn't very good. Um, typical play against the uh, chain. Uh, E4, a very aggressive move, and and so ha- is just trying to come out fast here. If bishop takes F6, queen takes F6, he's hitting this one and this one. And so bishop H4, pawn takes pawn, queen E2, and queen A5. And now Castle's queen side was just insane here and probably the losing move. And and I got to talk about this. I, I mean, I just think it's completely irresponsible for, the, for White to play this way in the last round game. It's just completely over after this. He had to try. Bishop takes F6, pawn takes. And then something like queen takes e4, and I, I think that white's position looks like he has a position at least. Black is, of course, is okay, but white is okay too. So it turns out that this castle and queen side losing the a2 pawn just hands black the tournament, and I, I just think that it was, all right, black, white was not having a good tournament, but I think it's it's the player's obligation to try to play a good game because it has uh, it affects other guys in the tournament. I think that people should no matter no matter how bad a tournament you're having. I think when you play the guy that's in first place or anybody that's a contender for for the top place, I think you got the obligation to try and play uh, your best game possible. And I think if if uh, Nebuchadnezzar wanted to, he could have played a lot of solid moves, offered a draw. And, uh, and Wesley So would have been happy to take it. And as it turns out, Wesley So would have won the tournament anyway. But this kind of play is just, I, I think it's just uh, really ridiculous. So queen takes A to why not get the queen closer to the king. Um, and, uh, and, and he's going to go queen A1. He's going to tie him up. Queen B5 check. And, uh, and, and now we'll see that this is completely the wrong thing to do. I think that bishop takes f6, check, knight here, pawn takes, and then queen takes is still not so bad for white. Uh, I think black is better, but uh, this would have been a better chance for white by far and away. Uh, The way he plays after queen b5, I believe it's just lost. Pawn takes, queen takes, and maybe this is, maybe here is, is the sequence that that Nebuchadnezzar uh, um, overlooked. This is a very nice move here to st- sacrificing a bishop to start with rook to b8 on, on the file. Queen b1, he forces his back, and rook to b8. Obviously, the queen moves. It's going to be queen check, and then there could be some bishop b4 checks. There might be some e3 business. 
Uh, C2 is going to drop off probably at some point. Black, if he wants to, could just develop in council, and White's King is going to be in for it for a long time. So Rook to B8 is just a very tough move to deal with. Um, maybe uh, maybe if we put a computer here, a computer might find a defense, but a human, no way. So move 13, Wesley So with the black piece is already winning. Queen takes, knight takes. When I saw this game, I couldn't, uh, without looking at the opening, I could. I didn't have the faintest idea. I thought for a second it was a knight or from some or an English attack. I don't know, but the bishop's on h4. So, but it looks like that kind of Sicilian type of stuff. So, bishop to b5 check and 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 simple blocks. Um, if he went bishop takes, let's say he went here takes check, king here. Black's king's very safe. Uh, black might start up with h6 and bishop h6 stuff. If black needs to, he could play f5 and give his king his, uh, um, additional safety. And it's just over here already. Uh, um, it's it's a complete resignation here. So he did, instead of, instead of that, he did bishop to b5, blocks. These knights are protecting. He's just going to try to trade down. The queen's very annoying here. It's tying white's pieces down. If white's pieces are tied down, how can white make an attack? Well, the answer is white can't make an attack. White is just lost here. Knight e2, developing. Bishop e7 is a good move. Perhaps if white, I'm sure black was well aware of, uh, of rook takes, knight takes, and rook d1 stuff. But bishop e7 takes care of that. And after this, the king's pinned. And now the knights are free to move. The rook is free to get in the game. And it's already resigns. If you count the material, it's just a, uh, a bishop and a rook, and black has uh, and black has more pawns. Also, black has has uh, uh, six pawns, so black is uh, uh, ahead quite a bit material here. And white's forces are uncoordinated, so it's just a matter of time before the queen wraps up this game. Knight to d4, I don't see a threat, and rook to d8, very good move. Rook h3. And now a typical kind of um, liquidating combination. You're winning, you want to trade down, and that's what he does. Rook takes d4, very nice rook takes. Now, a white piece is bothering black so much here. The, the, the only thing is to get the, make sure the queen doesn't get trapped. He brings it back to a5. It's threatening to come to e1 to take even more stuff. So knight to d2, f5, no hurry here, just defending all of his stuff. Queen e5, a very nice centralizing move, defending the pawn. Nepomanamachi has attacked a7, and knight c6 defending and developing. g3, queen d4, threatening f2 again. And knight to b4 with all sorts of threats here. Uh, knight a2 is the main one. King moves, queen takes d2. And... White resigned. Well, I mean, you saw that that really White just played for for uh, somebody with a twenty seven sixty seven rating. He White was unrecognizable. I mean, I I think that would have been a good uh, chance for him to just play a regular game, and it's rating points, and it just it 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 would just would have been a better feeling if he played played another type of uh, game there instead of this suicide in the opening, and just lost by move thirteen. Just a uh, a, a terrible thing for, for a terrible way for, for White to play. Good for Wesley Soto. Nice job winning Tata Steel. Always a good tournament to win. One of my favorite traditional tournaments, along with Hastings, that I that I like to watch every year. Uh, and so that finishes uh, th this one. Also, um, talk about the uh, the, the uh, second section. Uh, ended in a tie between um, Marcus Ragger and Gawin Jones with a very nice nine points out of 13, followed closely by American, strong young American, Jeffrey Shong. And Jeffrey Shong was in good shape going into the penultimate round and lost a tough game against Arian Tari, the Norwegian GM. So congratulations to Marcus Ragger and Gavin Jones. 
um, maybe we'll see both of them in the uh, in, in the Vikings a first group next year. I don't see why not. I mean, you could. I don't know. If, I don't think there's any uh, tie-breaking match that they play in this tournament for them to to have a, a, a playoff. But I think they're both worthy of getting into the uh, uh, first section next year. And then um, uh, honorable mention for a good tournament goes to GM Adibon who starts off the tournament with a pretty low rating and finishes the tournament with a really nice score of a, a 7.5, 5.5, plus two when you're one of the lowest rated guys in the tournament. Very good result for him. Corey Yakin, seven points, plus one, not bad. And uh, disappointments for Aronian, uh last round loss to Andragan, which we saw, and also where he... But a satisfactory result, 7.5, just didn't end the way they wanted to. And um, so uh, another Vikings A, Tata's deal comes to a close. It was uh, really two weeks of, uh, of, of good chess. And now we can look to, uh, to other tournaments. The um, Gibraltar Open Tournament is still going on now. And, and that's, that's going to be uh, my focus. I have some friends playing that tournament, so I'll look to see how they did. So, hope everybody enjoyed our recap coverage of the Tata Steel Vikings A tournament, traditional tournament. Hope it continues for a long time to come. And hopefully, uh, we'll see that tournament back here next January. So, this is GM John Fedorovich. Thank you uh, for ICC's recap coverage of Tata Steel 2017. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you down the road for future coverage. Enjoy all the chess. Enjoy playing chess. Take care. See you uh, next month at my simul. Bye, everybody.